Hey guys, so let's talk about the NVIDIA 3070 and we're going to talk about a little build guide here. We're going to talk about things that you should know um, with the CPU, with the motherboard, with the power supply. We're going to tackle the 3080 and 3090 in separate videos. Today, we're going to focus on the 3070. Hopefully, you guys get a lot of information that's going to make your build better, faster, and easier. So let's get started. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. Remember to subscribe if you can. It helps the channel out. Check out my other videos. We do a lot of water-cooled builds. We talk a lot about GPUs. So leave a comment below as well if you have any questions. Remember to hit that thumbs up. So let's get right into it. The NVIDIA 3070, people are so excited about it. According to NVIDIA, it's going to be faster than the 2080 Ti, which is over $1,000, and the 3070 comes in at $499. So naturally, a lot of people are planning their builds around it. Everybody's been waiting for these new GPUs to drop. And now that they've finally been announced and that they're going to be here very, very soon, let's talk about some important things that you should know if you're planning your build. So let's break it down in a few important things that you need to know. First, we're going to talk about what type of monitor and resolution you're going to be playing at. This is going to be important because it's going to sort of dictate what sort of CPU that you need. Um, second, we're going to talk about the CPU itself. Then we'll talk about the motherboard and then some miscellaneous things such as the power supply and cases and things that just are going to work nicely with the build, maybe RAM. So first, let's tackle resolution. Now, according to NVIDIA 3070, faster than a 2080 Ti. As we know, the 2080 Ti excels currently. Um, 1440p absolutely crushes it. 4K, it does very, very well. Of course, it's the fastest consumer card out now, so that would make sense. So what resolution are you going to be tackling with your 3070? Most likely, I would say a lot of people will be using 1440p, maybe 144 hertz. 3070 will be perfect for this, as well as 1080p and 240 hertz. It's going to be very, very good at these resolutions. If you're playing at anything that's a little under maybe 1080p 144 hertz the 3070 will be more than enough in fact it will be overkill now if you want a game in 4k 144 hertz and of course remember we haven't actually seen benchmarks yet we're just going basically on speculation comparing it to what could possibly be a 2080 ti level performer so 4k gaming i think it's going to do it comfortably as well of course you're not going to hit the max refresh rates like you may on the 3080 or 3090 but i think compared to previous generations where the 2070 Super may have struggled in some 4K games, I think you're going to be able to at least hit certain minimums playing 4K. But I think this card is going to be a little bit more geared towards 1440p and 1080p players. And of course, let's not forget ultra wide. Those will be fine as well. So if you're playing at any of these resolutions, the 3070 will be more than sufficient. It's going to be fantastic at 1080p, 1440p, and it's going to manage 4K. Of course, if you're doing 4K and beyond, even 8K like the 3090, eventually you may need something beefy like that. But the 3070 looks like it's going to be a very capable GPU. So now that we know the resolution, let's talk about the possible CPUs. Now, I also did a separate video on this. You can check it out. It's a very recent video. So quickly, if you're going to be playing at 1080p and you want very high refresh rate, the lower the resolution, the faster the CPU that you're going to need. For example, if you want to do 1080p, 244 hertz, you need a CPU that's going to clock very, very high. If you have something like an AMD Ryzen 2700X, maybe even an older Intel CPU, a 6700K, those are kind of borderline. The 2700X really doesn't clock that high. Um, back then, Ryzen wasn't as optimized. The 6700K, something like that, it's going to start to get closer um, to what you need. A 7700K, closer still. 8700K, um, you know, those clock really nicely. Of course, a 10900K is probably going to be the best performing CPU with a 3070 at 1080p, just because it's a very high clocking CPU and you're not going to be bottlenecking it. 1080p. Now, I get a lot of questions, 6700K, 7700K, um, the Ryzen 2700X, and of course, the newer AMD Ryzen 3700X. I think if you're doing 1080p high refresh rate gaming, the other ones will work, of course, but if you want to maximize your performance and not bottleneck, 
I would at least, let's say, let's talk about AMD and Intel. On the AMD side, I would try to get at least something like the 3600X or 3700X. The 3600X is a surprisingly good gaming CPU as well. Um, the clock speeds may not be as high as some of the Intel parts, but it's very well-rounded. It's priced very, very well. So I think for the most part, the 3600, 3600X will pair nicely with the 3070. Of course, if you can bump it up a bit to the 3700 or something, something like that, I think it's gonna give you even better performance. And on the Intel side, most of the mid-range CPUs, maybe like the 10600K, 10700K, or even the previous generation 8700K, the 9900K, 9700K is also a very good one, clocks very high. Even the 9600K, you start to get a little bit of limitation there, but that's still going to be a very nicely performing gaming CPU. So basically any of those that have a decent clock speed, um, with AMD, I would get minimum 3600, anything below that, like the 30. 200 or even the 2700x they're fine cpus but i think um, you might start bottlenecking the 3070 at 1080p um, now if we move on to 1440p the cpu becomes a little bit less of a factor but it's still there as a factor so everything that i said kind of rings true but i wouldn't worry as much like maybe even if you have a 2700x you want to play at 1440p you'll be okay. Just remember with a higher clocking CPU, just like a 1080p, you can still see some better numbers. It may still bottleneck your 3070 at that resolution. And now if we start moving on to 4K, this is when the CPU becomes less relevant and then the 3070 would really take over most of that processing. Now the CPU can still be a factor, but I wouldn't worry about it as much here. But if you're gaming at 4K, there's a good chance maybe you have a little bit beefier CPU already to begin with, just because 4K monitors are a bit more expensive. Maybe you're doing content creation as well, or maybe you just wanna see better graphics. So of course, there's nothing wrong with a lot of these existing CPUs all the way down from the 2700X to the 9600K, up of course to newer AMD processors like the 3900X or the Intel 10900K. It's really going to come down to how much you want to spend and how much performance you want to eke out of that 3070. The higher end CPU you get, the more performance you're going to be able to get out of this GPU. Um, the most at 1080p, second at 1440p, and then a little bit at 4K. Just remember that and get whatever CPU goes well with your budget. Of course, the GPU itself is going to be the most important factor so here we're just talking about really optimizing it and trying to avoid bottlenecks but if you have an older cpu i wouldn't necessarily worry about it upgrade your gpu first see what game you're playing what performance you're getting in the real world and if you find that it's a little bit lacking then you can tackle that cpu upgrade later on and then the next thing that we're going to talk about sort of related to the cpu and i also made a separate video on this let's talk about the motherboards the big question here is going to be the pcie generation 3 versus generation 4. most of you are familiar with this because it's more related to the nvme you know the the solid state drives that you put in your system so basically the current generation uh, gpus even the 2080 ti it's really not going to take too much advantage of pcie generation 4. there have been some tests done that it has very minor improvements maybe one to two percent worst case maybe five percent with certain games or something like that but the new gpus apparently are going to take more advantage of pcie generation 4 so what motherboard do you get if you want to future proof a little bit um, are you going to be okay with your current setup the first question don't worry, I think you're still gonna be fine, especially with a 3070, even if you have an older Intel, like a, a Z170, even if you're on a little bit older AMD CPU, like the last generation Ryzen, like a 2700X, you're still gonna be fine playing on PCIe Generation 3 with a 3070. Are you gonna be getting every ounce of performance out of it? Not necessarily, but I definitely wouldn't worry about it too much. I would just optimize different things in your system. I don't think it's that big of a deal yet, but in terms of motherboard, Boards. If you do want to be a bit more future proof, I would definitely go to the newer AMD motherboards because those already have PCIe generation four. And then you basically don't have to worry because you know, they're going to support it. Primarily the X570 motherboards, they have already PCIe generation four. Now the Intel Z490 doesn't technically have it now with the current generation CPUs, but apparently it's going to be added in their 11th generation Rocket Lake. So if you have a Z490, possibly next generation, if you upgrade, you may be able to get PCIe generation 
generation 4 but you know we're not completely sure yet how that's going to work if pcie generation 4 is something that's really important to you and you think that possibly it may provide some type of performance advantage later on x570 amd is definitely the way to go you know throw a 3600 in there a 3900x you know whatever you want that's going to be the safest way to go so if you really want to future proof i would get that but if you have an existing motherboard already that doesn't have pcie generation 4 i wouldn't worry about it it's not something i would go out of my way just to upgrade let's wait until these gpus actually come out and people start doing real world tests and maybe the software gets better optimized and drivers and then we can really see if PCIe generation 4 is providing a significant benefit because right now one to two percent maybe five percent at most and that's dependent on the games it's dependent on different hardware on a lot of factors so it's not really a big deal but in the future it may eventually be a big deal as we go into more 4k more 8k especially with the higher end GPUs like a 3090 that's where the generation 4 may be a bigger deal and eventually you're definitely going to want it but I think for now if you have an older mother the board that only has generation three don't worry about it you're still going to be getting a lot of performance from the 3070 um, i don't really think it's going to be much of an issue or any significant bottleneck so i wouldn't worry and just stick with what you have for now and then later on you can make a decision as we have more information and lastly let's just talk about some other supporting components if you're doing the build um, the power supply with the 3070 I think you should be fine with anything over 750 watts, you know, depending on the CPU you're pairing it with. But I think most gaming setups, 750, 850 watts should be more than enough. If you want to go a little bit overkill, have more headroom, 1,000 watts is fine. Of course, with the 3080 and 3090, you may want at least 1,000 watts or a bit more just because they're going to be beefier. But with the 3070, I'd say anywhere from 750 to 850, that's going to be sort of the sweet spot. And in terms of any special connections, um, basically, I think all the third-party cards are going to be regular connections like we're used to on the 20 series the only one that's going to have that special 12 pin uh, connection that's going to be the founders edition cards from nvidia and you're going to get of course you know uh, adapter cables with that so i wouldn't worry um, the power supply that you have now if you have a gaming rig now likely is going to be more than enough and if you're going to be buying a new power supply I would just try to get at least 750 watts if you can just because these new gpus definitely are a little bit more power hungry in fact the 3080 3090 they have around 100 watts more than the previous generation 2080 ti and the 3070 as well is more power hungry so i would get a beefier power supply just to make sure you have a lot of headroom and that way if you upgrade your gpu in the future you're going to be a lot better prepared and you don't have to go buy a whole new power supply in terms of cases for these new gpus since they're going to be pretty powerful, likely run a little bit hot, you definitely want to get a case that's going to give you a decent amount of airflow, as well as some nice performance in terms of noise. You don't want to be hearing, you know, your GPU blasting. We don't know yet how these reference coolers, if you're getting it from NVIDIA, are going to be. But generally, the third-party coolers are a little bit more quiet, but they can definitely throw a lot of heat in your case. So if you're going to get a new GPU like this, I would definitely pair it with a nicely designed case. Some examples of cases that I've used of course the lean lee dynamic and the xl um, those are some of the most popular cases on the market now um, they have some decent airflow as well even if you air cool you can water cool that's really what they're meant for a little bit but you could also put a nice air cooled setup in there i've also been using the be quiet cases like the 500 series and the, the 600 of course i did builds in the bigger ones like the 900 now these are going to give you a lot more silence so if you have your gpu in there they come with really good fans like and they're generally pretty nicely designed with different airflow channels in mind. So that's going to be a good combination of silence as well as performance. But otherwise, I would make sure to look for particular cases that are going to give you the most airflow. That way, you make sure that these GPUs are getting fresh air in and they're going to perform at their best, even the 3070. And then with everything else like RAM and your solid state drives, I recommend people get NVMe drives or at the very minimum solid state drives as those really give you great performance in Windows when you're you know just clicking around and even to to load games they're not going to affect your graphics too much but it just makes your windows experience better and then the same thing for ram i wouldn't go crazy buying really really expensive ram for gaming i would get at least 16 gigabytes of ram 32 gigabytes if you're doing some content creation or some videos or something like that but purely for gaming 16 gigabytes is going to be the sweet spot maybe around 3200 megahertz that's going to give you sort of optimal performance you don't have to go too much higher as you're going to pay much 
much higher prices as well as get a lot of diminishing returns so i would stay around that range anywhere from 3000 to 3200 megahertz all right guys i hope this little build guide and suggestions helped you guys if you're planning to build on the 3070 remember to subscribe i got other videos coming on the 3080 and 3090 as each tackle different resolutions and may have different requirements so please stay tuned to the channel leave a comment below if you have any questions remember to subscribe watch my other videos and i'll see you guys on the next video